I will give uh, just a uh, few chances, uh, chances to some of you. Just two, three. So there are the UN offices nowadays. They are trying to help us also. We are local organizations. And uh, hopefully they will do that. But it is more we need. Uh, like alternative dispute resolution, it must have been, you know, immediately people reacting to that since we said we have signed peace. But nobody is helping the alternative dispute resolution center because it is about peace and resolution. And if peace and resolution is not supported, then what will happen to that peace? Anyhow, I'm hopeful this will happen. And last time when you were here, doctor, you told us there will be this localization concept. What happened to it? Are you coming with that? Are you helping us with that? Because unless the local organizations like us, who speak the language, who know the people, who are in the community, are supported to support those who are and able to support themselves physically, mentally, socially, and economically. Who else can do that? Thank you very much. Welcome, Dr. Karin. Katrin. I am Tukhlomuz from FH. Uh, my question is, one of the recommendations from pro pro protection cluster is to have intensive main action service. But currently, ANMAS is not present in Tigray. So we urge to resume activities of ANMAS, United Nations, Mine Action Service Integral. So we need your support and cooperation in this regard. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to actually flag seven keywords. First, one is IDP returning. Second is education. Third, health. Fourth, resumption of all services. Five access to hard to reach areas, especially Europe and Kunama people. Uh, seven, recovering local administration throughout Tigray. But, no, this is six, no. Yeah, seven, resilience on food security. In here, we really demand support of inputs, agricultural inputs. We need to be resilient enough as people. We don't need really want to, to remain throughout humanitarian assistance lifetime. We want to be resilient enough by ourselves. So we demand agricultural inputs. But the emphasis I want to give is, since it's going to be generation issue, I want to really focus again in education. In fact, it's going to be a sign of establishing the peace Observing children going to school, coming back to home, which pleases all, everyone. And by investing and ensuring education in place, you are going to address one third of the population of Tigray. And think of it that one third of the population is going to move across Tigray, doing business, doing education, caring children, caring women, providing health. This is going to be the result. So let's sustain the peace by investing in schools and reopening schools. I, uh, I want to remind you the first slide of mine, seeing two children sitting together in a collapsed classroom, reading together and communicating each other. That is the level of thirst of education from Tigrayan children's side. Thank you. Firstly, thank you, thank you very much for being here, and thanks for the warm welcome back. Um, and uh, to you, Chair, thank you for giving me this opportunity to meet with the ECC. This is my first time to be at, uh, at this ECC meeting. I've been coming to Tigray actually since November 2020. Um, some of you may have been here, some of you may not, so, you know, it's been a rough ride. And each time um, coming in, um, even now, things looking a little bit better, but we're not there yet. So I very much appreciate 
um, everything that you have said. But before I proceed, I just want to introduce the people I came with because you know, you know the team here, but I want to introduce Michelle. Michelle Saad is the head of OCHA in Ethiopia. And then I want to introduce Rose Lamini, Dr. Rose Lamini, who is the WHO representative AI for Ethiopia. I also came with Prince, but I think he's probably outside, but he is the chief security advisor for Ethiopia. Um, and as you know, I think DSS have tried very hard to increase their um, presence, but also OCHA and WHO. And I wish, actually, I'd had this meeting before because it's always interesting to hearing it from the bureaus, you know? And I really would like an, an, an opportunity to keep the conversations with bureaus because when we sit in Addis, we talk to the line ministries, talking with finance, with defense, with agriculture, um, with health, with education. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you as the authorities are in charge of your people. And we are here as the UN, as the international NGOs, and that, to, to really support you in reaching and meeting the needs of your people. So you must see us as additional to what you are doing. I must admit that when I was here last time, and I appreciate, uh, you know, the conflict's been going on for so long, and it was so vicious and violent that when on November the 2nd they signed that agreement, I must admit we, we were all surprised, but we were all shocked, but we were all pleasantly surprised. And if you remember, I said at that meeting that we must try as much as possible as the humanitarian community to really be part of the solution, to really try and make sure that we do everything. Because when you looked at that agreement, it had everything in it that really sounded brilliant, right? But we always knew it was going to be difficult to meet everything when it was supposed to be. And I think there was a lot of high expectations of what would be achieved within X number of weeks, within X number of, now we're in the fourth month, aren't we? November, December, January, February. And yes, a lot has happened. You know, I'm not a politician, right? But I know that when politicians have a desire to do something, it's left to the rest of us to make it work. Because we are the ones at the end of the day who are really in the, are the foot soldiers in charge of things that make our families and our communities matter. So, the expectations was that things would happen immediately. We expected, you know, that uh, demobilization would happen, that there would be... The one thing that did happen, though, and I don't know, you may verify, is that maybe a, not a single bullet has been fired. Has it? Because that was key. We had always, as humanitarians, said, we want cessation of hostilities. Please stop fighting so that we can do what we need to do to reach people and that we can give them back their lives. So the speed of reacting to that, it takes time. And unfortunately, the systems that we're dealing with in our, in our settings were never perfect even before the conflicts. So everything was much slower. Public institutions don't run at the speed at which you work. Now, as civilians, of course, we expect the politicians and the armed forces to really do their homework and make sure that they meet the promises that they have made to the people. Because this, these promises to the people, if they're not made, then things can go crazy, right? So our marching orders from the UN Secretary General and others when he came in December was, be part of the solution, humanitarian assistance. Make sure, you know, and all the funding, all the, everything came out to try and make sure that we had all the roads and ac accessing to Mekele, to Shire, to Abi Adi, to Ad Aksum Adigrat, but of course there were bottlenecks in between. So it's not as if the desire was not there. The desire was there, but it seemed to be complicated, but things that were quite out of our control. But our advocacy, reminding the people who are at the top to remember what you have promised, remember what you have promised, remember the people, has meant that things are moving, 
but they're not moving at the speed at which it would make you not sick, my dear. It is not moving. But on the level from where we sit, the fact that there's absence of violence does not mean that there is peace. The fact that the guns are not fighting does not mean that we are there yet, but it's a road map to where we want to be. And so I really admire you that you're actually meeting still, that you're, we get the information on the commodities that are going through, that are reaching those where you have had challenges. Which people are you not meeting? We heard about the Arab area this last week. So we're being informed by the UN colleagues here in Mekele on what advocacy we need to make in Addis, Shire and with here in order to say no, it doesn't matter who the people are, we need to reach them. And we need to reach them. As humanitarians on humanitarian law we've said we will reach them with everything they need. Whether it's food, nutrition, water, safe water, new, um, education, agriculture, seeds, fertilizers. And that's what we've been trying to do. In Addis we know it needs all money. Now, the one area where we don't seem to have problems with money, or we have better, let me say no problems, but the one area where we seem to have better money is food. The US government and the government are the biggest suppliers of food assistance. It's a challenge getting money for everything else. The medicines that you're talking about, the vaccines, the, the livestock um, issues, the issues to do with across everything that we're talking about has required constant advocacy to buy, to procure, to put it on the back of a truck, to get it here, and then to get the fuel and everything that is required to make it move together to the people who need it. And that's why the ECC is important. Because it's not okay just to have a food truck going to a community. Yes, it's nice, they can get their wheat. But they need everything else, right? And when they need everything else, they may have a mobile clinic. But in the last meeting that we had in the town hall, they said, actually, we want the hospital done again, the clinic done. Our kids must go back to school. So at the moment, we have access to Tigray, and Tigray is still very important to us as humanitarians. Yes, we've got a northern Ethiopia response, but we look at every region separately. So it's not northern region plan or whatever it is. No, there's a Tigray response, and if you look at the HRP even that we've put together, it's region by region by region. At the moment, Tigray has actually got our biggest presence as the United Nations and as the international NGOs. And that will continue because we understand the impact is huge. It's not going to be sorted out, in, certainly not during this period. And the lessons learned with the issues that you're talking about, the impacts of SGBV, the impacts of being having to go through roadblocks. I come from a country where we had soldiers on the streets for 30 years. I know what it's like to be having to go through checkbox, checkpoints with people with ammunition, you know? It lives with you for a very, very long time. So this response needs to continue for a very long time. But there is so much more that needs to be, to be done. Yesterday, we had a meeting with some of the partners. The issue of localization is key. I said it from the minute that we arrived in Ethiopia. I said it in December. If it hasn't happened, I'm meeting with my colleagues later after this. And I will ask them, why is it not happening? Now, I have now at least a mapping of all the international NGOs in Ethiopia, including the ones in Tigray. And I know that the majority of international NGOs actually employ national NGOs to do the work. They have to. It's, it can't be done by, by international organizations. Local organizations are closer to the people. You're closer to the households. But you need, as I said, the money and the resources to do so. So if it's not happening, we will discuss with the team. The colleagues are here, they know each other. And we'll say what is not happening. And I said that this is a follow-up that, is, that is, is necessary. That localization agenda has the backing of the donors. It's not just the UN, 
but the Americans, the Danish, the Germans, we had the meeting yesterday on the Ethiopian Humanitarian Fund. They want to see it happen. It's the only sustainable way of meeting the needs of people for as long as possible and being flexible and agile in responding. We also discussed about the idea of moving away from commodities to cash. There's no reason when things improve in Tigray with the markets and the banks that people and families get cash instead of being told, oh, you have this bag of wheat and you have this oil. Maybe that's not what I want. I may want something else. You know, I may want to buy what my children and family need. So that agenda is going to move forward. I know the banking system is not up fully, but from the federal level, there's an intention to do that. Um, and so we need to just be a little bit patient, but it's very difficult when you've been under very difficult circumstances for me to say that. So I apologize for even mentioning it that, that now. With the unexploded organism, um, the UXO, sorry, or not organism, that sounds biological. But with, with the UXOs, definitely, I even met with Ministry of Finance and uh, Ministry of Defense yesterday because UNMAS is in country, but the equipment that they need needs to be imported and cleared by the security personnel. So that is being worked on forward. I've said it is an emergency, particularly with IDPs going back and schools being cleared. And we know that some of the places we know already see kids with, with um, um, uh, amputated limbs. And so I am told, and I got that message this morning, that they will do this. I've asked UNMAS to do me a concept paper. And then, because I think there was a request actually from you last year that went to UNMAS requesting this action. But, so it's no point in me getting people. I need people with equipment. The equipment, as they do the assessments, they actually get rid of the UXOs themselves. So that definitely is, is happening at the moment. And then, of course, the list of the needs for the region continue. There's no normality yet. Even the fact that you're sitting in the ECC is amazing because you yourselves are traumatized. You yourselves come from communities where you are probably not recognized because you're committed, you're passionate, you have to see it happen. But I think that you have to be easy on yourself moving forward. The Transitional Justice and Accountability, the Office of the Human Rights Commission and the Ethiopia Human Rights Commission, I don't know if you have seen the roadmap that they push, produced. If you haven't, we will circulate it. But it tells you that they have consulted with communities across um, um, Amhara, Afar. They tried for Tigray in southern Tigray, but because of the access issues, were not able. So they actually spoke to Tigrinians who were IDPs in Amhara, IDPs in Afar, to actually inform the community dialogue and were able to come up with what communities were saying they wanted around the transition justice and accountability. It was a mixture. It was a mixture of things that needed to be sorted out in conversations at the community level, with the leaders at the community level, with the religious leaders, and of course I appreciate the issues happening in the Orthodox Church now, but things that hap would happen at the household and community level to sort things out, but with the judiciary also back in action. And of course, you don't have anything here, but you know, and so that is part of the governance structure that needs to be placed. But the, it, again, transitional justice and accountability takes years. I mean, there's a, this country in Asia, the Japanese in, was it, Cambodia. They've only, you know, 40, 40 years later, you know, but we need to start, and there is absolutely no going our way with it. From our point as the UN, we're pushing for it. The UN Secretary General is very clear that that's going to happen, and the government, from what we hear from the federal level, they're committed to it. So we, it is a promise. You know, they're, you know we're very good at making promises to communities and never following through. But we need, as you said, community, civil society engaged in that process. Now, I know, for instance, for the national dialogue, being a component of, the commissioners came to Mekele. I don't know if you met them. 
I don't know what the conversation was, but the push to get Tigray and its citizens as part of the national dialogue is high on the list, and we will follow up with, uh, with them because we're supporting the structure, but we're not involved, if you see. This is a very Ethiopian process. It's not, it's not something where the UN is trying to say, oh, this is our, pro it is not. Um, but I think the involvement of every citizen and repre being represented from where they come from is important. The National Dialogue is supposed to have face-to-face -face conversations with 2.5 million Ethiopians. We've been looking for money. Everything needs money. And I've been going from embassy to embassy asking, please, National Dialogue, peace building, very important. It's not just about moving a truck of food or a truck of oil. It needs, but these need resources. You have to pay the facilitators. You need to pay the people sitting under the trees. And at least we've got agreement from the commissioners that they're not going to use government structures. They're not going to use the local administrators, zonal administrators. It has to be independent of government structures. It's going to be with your university, the academia that you've been talking about, with the community leaders, the religious leaders, to facilitate that discussion and then bring it up to the regional level and then federal level and then see what happens after that. So it's coming from Uganda where we had this national dialogue. It's still going on after the war finished 30 years ago. It is something but it needs to happen because it will help the healing. It will help the justice and justice needs to happen and it, needs, it will happen for Ethiopia across your borders with Eritrea and everybody else um, um, around. And I agree with you, the nationalization, localization agenda, and uh, Michel is here, he's listened to your comments, the decentralization of that process needs to happen. I can't see how the UN can lead that. It has to be led by the national NGOs. We can provide steer and be present. You can be, but you, you, know, you need to do it yourself. And we create the linkages with the donors. But the donors are very interested. And in fact, in our meeting yesterday, it was, can we make it a condition for getting resources? Um, yes, we've made some progress, but I think we can do a lot, lot more. I know the US partners, for instance, just work with national NGOs. The United Nations needs to do better, but this is a discussion that I'm going to have after this, and certainly needs to be a bottom-up approach and must be across the whole of Tigray, and uh, the working group must be put in place for Tigray. The national NGOs must, and you are, they, they are involved in peace building, because I I used to, I've got an, an NGO background, this is where I come from, and I know that whether you're doing um, health facilities, vaccinating a child, or you know, making sure family planning is given, peace building is part of that conversation. What is your relationship with your neighbor? You know? The marriage issues, the counseling that happens. Is your child going to school? Can you also look out for your neighbor's child? All that is peace building. You may, not, you may think that it's this big, high level, you know, Pretoria, Nairobi, but you know, at the community level where things need to change, that is the peace building that you also need to count as part of something that, that, that happens. So I will be back. It's not that... Um, I, I don't want to. Andrew, you have lost Andrew, the Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator. Um, Bonnie, who you see here, um, who is the Deputy Head of OCHA, will be covering um, 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 Tigray. And I think that the senior management team of the United Nations, working very well with, the, with yourselves, the, the, the administration, this partnership is strong and must be continued. It is not one entity that is going to be de to deliver on this. And feedback is important. So I really appreciate the feedback coming back. Because one of the discussions I had with your leader is really about the IDPs. It remains a big problem. What are people going to do when they go back? if they want to go back. The humanitarian principles must still apply. So we, we must be able to sort of be very flexible but listen to what people want and not tell them what we think they should do because we want to move X, Y, Z. And I think sometimes that is the balance that creates some issues with needing to clear the schools, needing to get X, Y, Z, the hospitals. But think, are people going to go back with a package? 
Where are they going to? What will they do? Because they may be displaced again when they go to where they are. So peace and security is a must for us to be able to do further and to do a lot more. And I pray divine intervention continues that it allows us to be able to move very fast. The resources must come. And I'm coming here in about two weeks' time with the UN Secretary General himself. And you will have an opportunity to engage even further. Because for me, as the United Nations, this is our role to keep the attention on Ethiopia, to keep the attention on Tigray, to keep the attention on us getting more people in, and we've just uplifted our security level for Tigray, so more staff will be coming in to be able to work together with you in sorting out the situations for this region. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I'm not going to talk. You're not going to talk? Are you finished? Uh, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of issues raised. Uh, just I will give only emphasis to one point. Uh, it's about peace. Yeah. So if you see the promises that are given to us and what is delivered, when you compare it, it's not because of the commitment of the donors. Basically, it is because of the peace. If you don't have peace, just will not have such kind of uh, privilege. For us, uh, what we need peace is even to reduce the, your burden. The case loads in Tigray under normal condition doesn't exceed one million. But this time, we are saying just 5.2 million is not enough. So in order even to reduce your burden, you have to invest in peace so that we can just uh, uh, support ourselves. Uh, so resumption of service, strengthening of peace will be the core uh, and the center of, of, of uh, uh, my message. Uh, but I would like to use uh, this opportunity just to reflect my, uh, uh, my feedback about how you were operating. Even if there was a gap between just the supply and the, uh, uh, the demand, the commitment that is shown by UN agencies, by international NGOs, local NGOs, under this very uh, tough condition, it's very remarkable. Always, this time, just we are very in a very relatively comfortable time. We are thinking even healing. But a few months ago, just we were, we were grading, just we were in a war. So the past is now just 180 degree return. This is the, the way for peace, for healing. So uh, I would like to appreciate all of you for your commitment, for your contribution, uh, for siding with our people, always in a very hard time. Uh, you were with us. Uh, so when you get support just in a very hard time, you will never forget it. Just as organization and as human being also, just as, as individuals, as humanitarian, I really uh, like to appreciate uh, all of you. But mainly, uh, this piece is not as such settled, as you said. There are a lot of things to be uh, done. Of course, we believe uh, we have to work our uh, challenges, but still there are a lot of uh, support that we need from you. Mm -hmm. So at this time, we need just your presence because this time we, I'm hearing that from some of uh, head of agencies, they are moving even uh, uh, to Addis. <laughs> yeah, just of course uh, that is an, uh, an indication, not for all, all, all of you, but uh, so we have to keep on, on that one. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, of course uh, we don't want just to keep them always here, but we need them just until at least we reach one harvest time. Yeah. As we are agrarian, just we need just your support badly. Yeah. The reason why those days rates, just the health condition, that was explained. It is a reflection of the gap of food, basically. Mm -hmm. It's not only just because of la like uh, non-communicable disease or some others, but because of just lack of food, health, uh, nutrition, I mean, the health uh, status of anybody, I can say, just. Because just there is nobody not affected living in Tigray, at least mentally. Uh, 
that is what I would like to, to say. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Catherine, your presence, your commitment. Uh, you are just coming here and visiting, even if following, just uh, sitting from Addis. We really appreciate. When I'm thanking you, just I'm also just thanking just all of you, all of uh, your staffs and other partners, because you are delivering uh, what is there just through them. So uh, when I am uh, uh, appreciating Dr. Catherine, what I mean is just also for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.